The accounting equation mirrors the balance sheet. We learned that in the previous video. So let's uh, demonstrate that with a few simple transactions. Let's pretend on the 1st of January, Harry Hampson decides to set up a small business called Harry's Hats. He deposits $50,000 of his own money into a bank account in the name of the business. This is called a capital contribution. So we've got the accounting equation, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. We've got a basic balance sheet down the bottom. So with this particular transaction, we'd say the business now has $50,000 of assets. And the other effect would be it's now got $50,000 of capital. So you can see the two sides of the balance sheet balance, and that's reflected in the accounting equation. I've got assets of 50, owner's equity of 50, and liabilities of zero. So the two sides balance. Total them up, we should always total the balance sheet to prove that it balances. On the 2nd of January, Harry spent $10,000 to buy inventory of hats. There's our old balance sheet. We need to update it with the current transaction. So the first thing that will happen is we'll have $10,000 of inventory. But now we can see that the balance sheet is out of kilter. The le left hand side has 60,000 on it and the right hand side has 50. So the other effect we're going to need to factor in here is the cash will go down from 50 to 40. So now if I balance the two sides, I can see assets are 50, liabilities are still zero, and owner's equity is $50,000, the two sides balance. On the third, Harry borrows $20,000 from XYZ Bank and uses that money to buy a new vehicle for the business. There's our old balance sheet. We've now got a new asset called vehicle, and again, our balance sheet is out of whack. So our other factor in this case will be, I now have a liability called loan to XYZ Bank for $20,000. Checking our accounting equation, we've got assets of 70, liabilities of 20, and owner's equity of 50, and our balance sheet does balance. On the fourth, Harry withdraws $10,000 from the business for his personal use. That's called drawings, where the owner withdraws uh, their capital from the business. There's our balance sheet from the day before. So the first effect here is that I've now got less money. It goes from 40,000 to 30,000. The other effect is the owners were drawing capital. So the capital figure of 50 will go down to 40. And our accounting equation will now be assets of 60, liabilities of 20, and owners equity of 40. And our balance sheet is in alignment. And the last transaction, the business repays $5,000 of the loan owing to XYZ Bank. There's our balance sheet from the day before. I've now got, instead of $30,000, $25,000. The other effect there will be, instead of owing uh, XYZ Bank 20, I'll only owe them 15. So our two sides now will be assets of 55, liabilities of 15, owner's equity of 40, and the two sides balance. So this is a very simple balance sheet with very simple transactions, but the principle is the same no matter how big or small the business. This always has to be in alignment. One thing that's a little bit different, if I just prepared a balance sheet after every transaction, that's not how it happens. I don't make a balance sheet, have a transaction, do a new balance sheet, have another transaction and so on. That would take forever and in a real world business, you're going to be doing a thousand balance sheets a day. So we don't do it like that. What actually happens is the balance sheet is prepared as at a certain point of time and the end of that is actually called the end of the reporting period. So in this case, we'd have a balance sheet at the beginning of the period, as at the start of the period depending on whether it's monthly, quarterly, and yearly, so on. Um, transactions happen during the month, and then we do a final balance sheet at the end.